Dynasty is the word that comes to mind when describing the Virginia Cavaliers swimming and diving dominance. Ever since 2021, they've been an unstoppable force. Three years, three straight national titles. Led by the Wall Sisters and a slew of talent, they're determined to bring another title back to Charlottesville. But with many challengers set on knocking them off the podium, will we have a new champion or will the dynasty continue to year four? The pursuit begins right now as we kick off the 2024 NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. The best collegiate swimmers and divers descend on Athens, Georgia, where the University of Georgia plays host to the 2024 NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. We welcome you inside the Gabrielson Natatorium. Patrick Keenis, flanked by Olympians, Rowdy Gaines, and Cynthia Powder. And first off, Rowdy, for you, not since the days of Richard Quick, when Stanford won five consecutive titles in the mid-90s, has a team come close to replicating that? Todd DeSorbo in Virginia, three consecutive, loaded up for number four this week. Yeah, they really are, Patrick. And when you think about Virginia in its dynasty, there are so many reasons. First of all, you've got superstars in Gretchen and Alex Walsh. They could each win three individual events. Good team depth, great relays, and then there's that coach, Todd DeSorbo, who, by the way, is also the head Olympic coach for the women's team this summer. You add all that up, it's going to be very tough to beat them. Yeah, it's not going to be a simple coronation for Virginia. Some contenders. Texas has finished runner-up back-to-back years. Florida has now won two straight SECs. They finished ninth last year with some critical new pieces for the Gators. Yeah, they do, and they have a lot of young, hungry swimmers. So if, and that's a big if, but if Virginia slips up a little bit, they will be right there. All right, Cynthia Potter, as we go to the three diving events, not only are the individual champions up for grabs, but a lot of critical team points. What teams are best poised to make a move on those three events? You can never talk about NCAA diving without mentioning Texas. There's four divers competing for Texas, and it's not unusual for them to score close to 100 points in the three diving events total. That is crazy good. Florida has good divers. They're going to score points also in the finals. And UVA, Virginia, has one diver. She's good. Don't be surprised if there's not some points from Virginia also. It's going to be fun. All right, 13 individual events, three diving events, five relays. And the numbers on your screen is the points breakdown. 20 points in all of the individual events for the winner. But the points are doubled on relays. That's why it's so critical for Virginia. They swept all five relays last year. If Texas or Florida is going to make a move, they'll need to steal some relay championships. And we open up the 2024 NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving Championships with the last of three time finals. It's the 200 yard medley relay. The defending champion and NCAA record holder, Virginia Cavaliers, 131 51 last year. And Rowdy, the first major question of the championships has been answered yeah. by Todd DeSorbo. <laughs> Would Gretchen Walsh swim in the 200 medley relay or not? She didn't in the ACCs, but she's going to lead things off. The national champion for Virginia and the backstroke. Which makes them the automatic favorite. No question about it. Ohio State comes in with the fastest time in the country, returning all four swimmers. So they would love to win this, but I just don't see it happening. Not with the addition of Walsh, who gives them about two seconds faster than they were at ACC. So they will be the big favorite, but Ohio State will be good. No doubt about it. They really don't have a weakness. Virginia in lane five with Gretchen Walsh. She went 48-10, NCAA record in the 100 back of the ACC, part of a legendary meet. We'll watch her in lane five. Funderburg is going to go on huge for Ohio State lane four. Wow, look at her already at the feet. 10-9 on the feet there for Gretchen Walsh, the fastest in history, 22-5. Walsh will make the turn in 22-10. Fastest ever recorded. In a 50-yard backstroke, 22-1. Wow! 
Virginia has won eight straight relays. They swept all five at last year's NCAA championships. Here's the Northwestern transfer, Jasmine Nelson-Tini, who had a huge split, one of the fastest in the country this year at the ACC season. She's extended the lead for Virginia. Yeah, she was the third fastest in history at ACC's and put together a great one there. That's a 25-6. Another tremendous leg for Nelson-Tini to follow up ACC. Garland Oberlin, the soft more for UVA on the third leg and the butterfly was better than a length and a half lead for Virginia. Nobody's catching Virginia. Nobody is catching Virginia right now. Not happening. And it's Maxine Parker in the water for UVA. Ohio State with Teresa Yvonne. She's making a run here against the Cavaliers. Now Parker with the lead. Ohio State fading a bit and Virginia laying down the gauntlet. What? And Mark, 130, 158. They just missed the NCAA record by seven hundredths. Statement delivered by UVA. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it really is. Once they put Gretchen Walsh on this relay, there was no doubt in anybody's mind who was going to win it. And it was a great start for UVA. What's that now? Nine in a row they think they've won. Relay wise, here's the first leg right there 22.1. Wow, what, what a split! And she becomes the fastest in history. And then following up with a great butterfly leg there by Novaline, the sophomore. Three different swimmers are on this relay from last year, Patrick. Only Gretchen Walsh returns. So the Virginia Cavaliers win their ninth consecutive relay, nearly NCAA record time, missing by seven one hundreds. NC State has been disqualified. Let's go down to the deck and Elizabeth Beisel with the Cavaliers. All right, I'm down here with the Virginia Cavaliers, your winner of the first event of these NCAA championships. Jasmine, how important is it for you guys to win this first event in terms of momentum heading into the rest of this very long weekend? I mean, I think it's definitely very important. We were definitely talking about setting the tone for the meet and uh, just getting everyone excited and just release a little bit of the nerves and the pressure for everyone, too. Yeah. You talk about the nerves and the pressure, Gretchen. I feel like night one on NCAA is everybody's kind of like holding their breath. There's a lot of tension on deck. Now knowing that you split 22-1, fastest 50 backstroke ever, how are you feeling standing here about you and your entire Virginia Cavalier team? I'm feeling really good. Uh, that first event is always hard to just like have the right mindset going in because you are really nervous just to get the meet started off right. And I think that was the best way to start this meet. And I'm really excited to see what all the Who's do later this week. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited too. Congratulations, ladies. And there you see the summary results from all three of the time finals. Virginia finishing first, Ohio State second, Florida third, Stanford up from that second time final, 135-10. He is good enough for eighth. And so the 2024 championships are underway, and just like last year, Virginia puts up the 40 points in the first events as they win their ninth straight relay. So 40 points for the winner in the relays. Down to two points for 16th. You see Ohio State, 34 points. We'll watch Florida over the course of these four days and Texas. Florida finishing third, Texas sixth. Virginia's Alex Walsh takes aim at a sixth individual national title. Coming up next, she'll target a third 200 IM championship when we return to Athens. First time on the beautiful campus here in Athens, Georgia. Spring has sprung and it's gorgeous down here as they play host to the 2024 Women's NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships. I need a new landscaper, Rowdy. Here's the updated standings through now three events. Florida going 1-2 in the 500 free, extends its lead on Virginia to 25 points. Stanford third, Texas right now sitting in eighth. Top of the 200-yard individual medley here at the 2024 Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. Kate Douglas last year at the NCAA set the record 148-37. We'll see if that is in jeopardy here tonight. 
All right, Rowdy, there's the start list for the 200-yard I am. What do you see? Well, you see some usual suspects. There are a couple <laughs> Virginia Cavaliers, a couple Gators, and a Texas Longhorn. Lots of star power in this one. And there is a look at Alex Walsh. I don't think anybody's going to beat Alex Walsh here. I think she's got a great chance of breaking 150. Saw her swim this race this morning in prelims. Really shut it down. The last 50 has the best fly and breast overall than anybody in the, in the pool. And then you've got Josephine Fuller, though. As you said, a nice little dark horse here. Good fly and back. Her front half is really solid, no doubt about it. And if Walsh has the lead after the breaststroke, I think it's it's all over. Ivy can close well. If she's close. Of course, Ellen Nelson, the teammate of Alex Walsh, will close well as well. She is really good that last 50. Great freestyle. She was on their 800 freestyle relay last night. So Walsh and four going out hard in lane six. Kelly Pash to Texas. Most of people are kind of hanging around as they get the turn to 50-yard mark. The lead already 4,300s <laughs> yeah. for Walsh. 23-8, and that just gives you a little bit of sign because she's so experienced, she's she's not going to do anything dumb here in this race. She knows exactly what she has to do to be able to kind of get out there, build a lead, but then really nail the most important thing, and that's the breaststroke. That's Ivy down there at the bottom. She does not have a breaststroke to match up with Walsh. She has the freestyle, but not the breaststroke. Walsh makes the turn in front, 51-10, Fuller second, Ivy at the bottom of your screen in lane one, third, and closing. Believe it or not, that's just two tenths off of Kate Douglas's American record of 148. Now, that is not expected to go down tonight, but definitely has a chance to break 150 here. If she's anywhere close to 122, 123, she's got a shot. 20, 21, she's right there, 22, 3. And she pulled away on that discipline around as expected. Final 50 yards for Alex Walsh, and she has clean water to both sides. That, she's home at 27 mid. She's got a chance to break 150, which would be the second fastest swim in history. Here is Alex Walsh, two-time NCAA champion, 21 and 22, third last year. And the Virginia senior yeah. touches the wall, 149-20 and wins her third NCAA title in the 2IM. Ivy for Florida, up for second, Fuller third. Wow. That is her sixth individual national championship. Oh, just, just a textbook beautiful race. Look at this backstroke right there. It's 27-3 on her back. That's faster than anybody else. Her butterfly was faster than anybody else. And then her breaststroke was way faster than anybody else except for Lucy Bell. Lucy Bell was 31 flat, 31-2 though. Nobody else broke 32. And then it's just clear sailing, 26-9 on the end. As good as anybody in the field, except for Ivy, who closed well for the Gators. Big swim for them at the bottom of the screen to get second. But this race was all Alex Walsh. And guess what? Next up, it's her sister. <laughs> I see your national championship, and I raise you. <laughs> and now ready for the official results. Another national title for Alex Walsh in a sub-150. And Alex Walsh, the now three-time champ of the 200 IM, is with Elizabeth Beisel. <laughs> Down on deck with Alex Walsh. This is your sixth individual title in your NCAA career, but third in this event. When you touch the wall and you see a 149-2, what goes through your head? Were you expecting that tonight? Uh, I have a lot of really big goals for this week, and one of them was definitely going under the 150 barrier. Um, and I'm very, very pleased that um, to be 149-2. I just think that's a really good indication that um, I'm bouncing back after kind of a less than optimal season last year. So I'm just, I'm in a great place, and um, the Who's are here, baby. The Who's are here. This is a big meet for you. It's your senior year. It's also an Olympic year. 
So when you have a swim like that and you put down a 149.2, how much confidence does that give you going into the rest of this weekend, but also the rest of this year? Yeah, um, it gives me a lot of confidence, especially going into the 400 tomorrow. Um, and I just think having a really good night one or night two for us um, is a really good way for us to keep the momentum rolling into Saturday. So I'm very excited. Congratulations, enjoy this, and good luck the rest of the meet, Alex. So there is Alex Walsh, an embrace that is very familiar to her for the third time the 2 IM. She takes it down once again in 2024. And as Rowdy mentioned, her sister is on the way in the 53. And all Gretchen Walsh has done in the last month is break the NCAA 53 record, not once, not twice, but now three times. This is the middle of those three at the ACC Championships, Rowdy. Boy, she lit the pool on fire. Unbelievable swim there. A lot more to come, though. The NCAA Men's Swimming and Diving Championships take place March 27th through the 30th, live on ESPN+. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. All right, Rowdy, time for the 50-yard freestyle at the 2024 NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships. Gretchen Walls has set three NCAA records in this event in the last month, including one earlier today. And the start list for the 50-yard freestyle, it's a who's who and a start list replete with Virginia Cavaliers, Rowdy. Yeah, you start with Walsh, obviously, but she's also got two of her teammates in there, three Cavaliers, one of the reasons why they are dominating, three from Louisville as well. This is an ACC race. But all eyes will be on Gretchen Walsh. A race she has never won. She'll take aim at another NCAA record and an NCAA championship right. here. Let's, let's look at this for just a second. 61 swimmers swam the 50 freestyle. She was dead last on her reaction time. But it's not just the reaction. It's her velocity that getting into the water is so dynamic. She's 9.99 on the feet the first 25. Watch this thing. Oh, Here we go. She is dead last again, 0.75. Will it matter? Dead last. It will not matter. Walsh already surging to the lead. Turns at 9.88 round. That's 1100s faster than this one. 9.88, look at that turn. Here comes right Walsh. Right there. Bring it home. 20.41 is the NCAA record. And the touch, oh. 20.37. It's an American record, an NCAA record. And for the fourth time in a month, Gretchen Walsh has smashed the NCAA record. She's superhuman and an NCAA champion. Unbelievable. I, I just, you know, your, your eyes deceive you when you watch her come off the blocks because you think, oh, you can't do that in a 50. She could have had a cup of coffee before the gun, after the gun started. It still would have won the race. Watch this start, right there in the middle. She is dead last, reaction time. That's the reaction time. But watch what she does when she comes up and breaks the surface there. It's that velocity and underwater. The underwater is just incredible. And look at that turnover. Perfect turn, gets up underneath that wave right there. And then watch this, keep it going guys, just like that. Already popped up on the left, right there in the middle, pops up at the 15 meter mark. And this is what 20.37 looks like. And that's a little long on the tur on the touch there at the end. Wow. Unbelievable. Gretchen, you are so good. And I feel like I can speak for every single person watching at home and on this pool deck. It is a treat to watch you. And I am shocked every time you get into the water. Do you ever shock yourself when you see a time like 20.37, fastest human woman ever? I mean, yeah, I, I feel like, well, thank you, first of all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I do surprise myself a lot, um, but it's all about like in a race like that, finding like the hundredths of a second to drop. And I honestly, like I do drop two tenths at ACC's and so dropping two more, two more yeah. That was like unheard of for me and I'm like kind of amazed by myself and um, I'm just, I, to, to say the least, like I do get shocked, yeah. So I'm, jo I'm there with you. Good, good, me too, great, we're on the same page. So when you talk about those little details and dropping tenths of a second, 
What do you need to focus on in order to do that, especially over the course of just a month time? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it for me is just like my kick count and stroke count just because I do rely so much on my underwaters that like I want to make the most of them as much as I can. So um, really just making sure I'm popping up at 15 and hitting my walls and um, it takes a lot of practice, but I would say that was pretty that was pretty well executed. So I'm proud of myself. I think you should be. It was an amazing race. Congratulations, Gretchen. Two national championships in the last 10 minutes for the Walsh sisters. NCAA record for Walsh. Personal best for both Burkhoff and Nosatini. They finished second and third. Here are the updated standings. 26 and a half point spread for Virginia over Florida. And then a gap of 44 points from Florida to third place, Texas. So Gretchen Walsh wins the 50 in an embrace for the champion as UVA leads the way again, heading toward a fourth straight team title. The updated standings after our first event of this third night. Virginia's lead is now 51 and a half in Florida by virtue of a 2-7 finish in the championship final. Rowdy extends its lead for second place to 38 points over Texas. Yeah, big Big news there for Texas and Florida. They still are not out of this. A lot of diving to be decided for Texas. Virginia's got a diver there in the final later on, but a lot of swimming left. 100-yard butterfly NCAA championship. NCAA record set by our fastest performer coming out in lane four. That's Gretchen Walsh. Did that about a month ago at the ACC championships. G.G. Johnson, sophomore. She represents Stanford, but she's only an hour and a half from home, native of Atlanta. Megan Lee from Auburn in lane two, up from the B final from last year. As a matter of fact, three are up from the B final from last season into the championship final tonight. Olivia Bray for the Texas Longhorns. Her last ride as the senior is here in her third championship final in this one fly. Seventh back in 21 and again in 22. And here is the NCAA record holder with four individual NCAA titles. The fans rise and applaud greatness. Gretchen Walsh out of the deck. Just missed. Breaking her own NCAA mark today by 1-100. That is in serious jeopardy tonight. Emma Stickland from the Texas Longhorns. Fifth last year. She's the only returner from last year's championship final. The last Longhorn to win was Joan Pennington in 1984. Kelly Pash. Stickman's teammate for Texas, the fifth year out of Carmel, Indiana. 12 individual Big 12 championships. Here is Olivia Peoples, the junior for the Florida Gators. Was in that consolation final last year. Finished 16th overall. And Mia Crow, the Cal junior, 15th in the NCAAs last year. And she is now up into the championship final. But there is the prohibitive favorite, Gretchen Walsh, already an NCAA champion this week in the 50 free. Yeah, and she'll be last off the blocks again, first to pop up. Get this stat right here. Her first 50 this morning, 22-3. There she is surrounded by Longhorn. Get this, there's 1.5 seconds between her and second place Stickler. There's 1.3 seconds between two and eight. That's how big of a favorite she is. I think she goes under 48. And Rowdy, if she gets up to any kind of start, the NCAA record is hers. Actually, it was her best start of the meet, believe it or not, 0. .72. But look at the, oh my gosh, 9.9, 9.9 .9 going out. Can you believe that? The fans buzzing, oh, an electric God. start from Gretchen Walsh. The question now becomes, how low will she go? Oh, Halfway oh, through, oh, and Walsh at 1181. 21-7, she's 21-7. That's what most of that 50 freestylers go. She's six tenths faster than this morning, and Gretchen Walsh bringing it home. 48-25 oh, is the NCAA record, and it is only gonna last for the moment or two. 13 plus is all she needs to do it. Here comes Walsh, two more strokes to the wall, Walsh. 40. Oh. 42 by 73 100. She obliterates the NCAA mark that she set a month ago. It's her fifth individual NCAA title, and she looks absolutely dumbstruck by the number she sees on the scoreboard. Greatness is here in Georgia.
I, I don't know what to say. I, I mean, I, I, I think I was in the same spot a year ago, Patrick, when we saw Kate Douglas do this. And I didn't know what to say then. And I said, there's never going to be another chance that I'm going to be speechless. Here's the start. Much better. Still last off the blocks. I mean, she's still last. But look what she does when she pops up. She's a half body length. And she's 9'9". Nine, nine. Of all the 50 freestylers in the individual 50 free, none of them broke 10. <laughs> She did it going out. Now, I get it's on the feet, but still, the first 50, 21-7 going out. That would have qualified in the final of the 50 freestyle. She would have qualified. Unbelievable. <laughs> I, and there's too many superlatives to talk about in 30 seconds. That was the last turn. And then you're going to see 47-4. I don't know what to say. <laughs> and Gretchen Walsh, who has smashed the record by 83 hundredths, is down with Elizabeth Beisel. A time like 47, what does that mean to you? Has, I, I mean, it's been like a minute, so it probably, haven't, probably hasn't sunk in yet. But when you look at the scoreboard, is that something you thought was possible tonight? That was the goal, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I didn't think I would break that barrier by that much, but I mean, like, over the moon, happy, so proud. So. Um, yeah, I'm just excited for the rest of the night with the Who's and the relay later, so yeah. All right, go warm it down. Congratulations, Gretchen. Incredible swim. Yeah. Yet another NCAA mark for the greatness of Gretchen Walsh, 47-42. Meanwhile, major point pickup for the Texas Longhorns. Rowdy, Sticklin, Bray, and Pash go 2-3-4. That's 48 points for the Longhorns as they try to hunt down Florida for second. Huge for Texas. Great, great job for the Longhorns. So Gretchen Walsh outdoing herself again. 47-42, lowering her own NCAA record by 83 one hundreds mobbed by her Charlottesville teammates. It is the night of the Walshes. And Rowdy, as we get ready for the championship final, the women's 100-yard brass. Here's a look at the updated standings. Virginia 41 points clear, Florida second, Texas third. Nice little battle between fourth, fifth, and sixth. Only a handful of points separating three teams. And here are the contenders in the 100 breast in lane one. The grad student from Ohio State, Josie Panitz, seventh last year. As a matter of fact, we'll see six of the eight from last year's championship final are back again. And here is Panitz' teammate Hannah Bach from Ohio State. Sixth last, the last two years, as a matter of fact. This is a race Ohio State has never won. Well, somebody who has won this race, Caitlin Dobler, the 2022 national champ from USC. She was one of three earlier today to set pool records, but she comes in as the third seed in the prelims. That's how fast things went today. Here is your top seed, Mona McSherry, the national runner-up a year ago. She went 56-76 to set the pool record. And Tennessee, as a program, has never won this race. Great opportunity tonight. Jasmine Ocentini, native of Italy for Virginia. Her only year in Charlottesville. And Virginia, like Tennessee, has never won this race. There's Anna Ellens from Texas in lane six. Her third straight championship final for the German Olympian for the Texas Longhorns. Finished third a year ago. And here is the defending champ up in lane seven. And the Olympic champion in the 100 breast, Lydia Jacoby for the Texas Longhorns. And when she won it last year, first time since 1988 when Jason McFarland took down the title. And in lane eight with a huge drop today of almost a second, Stasia Makarova, the junior from Russia. She stole the championship final lane eight by six one hundreds. But back to Mona McSherry. Yeah. She is going to be very tough to beat. She is now the third fastest performer in history off of that prelim time. But this field is loaded. There's an Olympic gold medalist. How about that? Top to bottom, one of the most impressive fields you will ever see at the NCAA championship. The gold standard. Think about it. Five of the eight fastest swimmers in history are in this final. For McSherry, she has had this championship surrounded the last couple of years. Runner-up last year, fourth two years ago. 
We'll see if tonight is her night. She's in lane four for Tennessee. And there wasn't much difference at the 50 in the prelims. Two tenths of a second separated one through five in the preliminaries. And Tight going out here again. Dobler out quick though, 11 8. So is No Santini from Virginia in lane five. But Dobler is really going out for it. And so is lane number five, No Santini, 26 4 on the way out. So now Mona McSherry begins to split the difference in between Dobler and No Santini. McSherry in the orange cap. Here's the final turn. Mona McSherry, Dobler, and Nocentini almost simultaneously make the final turn. Wow. Popping up is Nocentini in the lead for Virginia in five. McSherry right now is second. And Jasmine Nocentini for UVA is going to win the 100 yard breaststroke. For the first time, Virginia wins the championship of the 100 breast. Nocentini, 56 09. Second fastest performer all time, Jasmine Nocentini. Another spectacular time. You take away Lily King, and that's the fastest ever. I mean, you can't take away Lily King, obviously, but 56 flat. Second fastest performer. That's the third fastest time in history. Only Lily King's 255 pluses are faster, and she did it in that last 50. She blew everybody away. 15 flat, her last 25 yards. If you don't understand how fast that is, just trust me, it's really quick coming home. You see McSherry right there staying with her early on. But boy, she had a good turn. And then coming on, pouring it on the last 25 yards. Dobler trying to make it interesting. She's 56-6. Both of them went their best times. But they're a full half second behind Nocentini and Virginia. Nocentini has finally found a home again. She started her career at FIU, went to Northwestern, and now her only year in Charlottesville. She now is a national champion. And Jasmine Nocentini is on the deck with Elizabeth Beisel. Jasmine, your first NCAA Division I individual title. It's been quite the journey for you. What does it mean for you to be standing right here knowing that it's taken a while for you to get here? I mean, I just can't believe it, honestly. I came here today just really trying to do my best and see where I was at. And I mean, I surprised myself. I had no idea how that in me, especially today. So I'm extremely grateful and very happy for the experience. Coming into one of the most stacked events, the field is so deep tonight. What is the balance that you have in terms of putting the blinders on and swimming your own race, but then also being aware of what all of the other athletes are doing in your heat? Um, well, I really tried to stick to my strategy um, and not try to really let what's going on around me affect me too much. But I definitely keep an eye on what's going on. I know the other girls are extremely fast and talented, so I just try to not look at them too much when I swim. Yeah. You are the first Cavalier to win this event. Congratulations, Jasmine. Enjoy this moment. I'm not sure what time it is in Padova, Italy, but they are partying, I'm sure. Jasmine Nocentini claims the NCAA championship for UVA. First ever Cavalier to claim the champion. And welcome back to the Gamerson Auditorium on the campus of the University of Georgia. Just moments away from the start of the three-meter springboard competition. Patrick Keynes alongside Olympian Cynthia Potter. And Cynthia, let's check out the last couple of dives of the one-meter champion crown earlier in the meet. So we will see here in the three-meter, Aron Vasquez Montana. The defending champion had no problems in the last two rounds. This is where she separated herself. That was the second highest scoring dive of the meet almost her, her last dive, her second to last dive, and this was the dive of the meet right here that secured the title without any question whatsoever. She defends it. Yadel Gamboa says, this woman turns it on when it's time to turn it on, and wonderful congratulations from all. And now as we prepare for the final round of the three-meter championships, there are the records set back 
15 years ago by Christina Lucas of Indiana. And here are the standings through five of the six rounds. It could not be any tighter. The defending champion Vasquez Montano, 1.3 points ahead of Haley Hernandez of Texas. And one dive to go, and Hernandez will dive in front of Vasquez Montano. How are those two feeling at this stage? Well, uh, at this point, the writing's on the wall. Look at the, deg the degree of difficulty mm -hmm. difference. It's nine-tenths degree of difficulty difference. And I wouldn't want to be in that position going into the last round. But I'm not going to be critical of Haley and her coach, Matt Scoggin. They're doing what she has confidence in. So here is Ann Fowler, third place after five dives. Whoa! Really good finish. She was in third, and there's a possibility yep. that she might stay in the top three or two with this final round dive. I think that's deserving of pumpkin pie, according to <laughs> Coach Drew Johansson. She went after it. She was aggressive. Beautiful last round. That was a 3.0 degree of difficulty. Nets her 63 points. Matches her best dive of the competition and breaks it out at the perfect moment. <laughs> she began the last dive around 18 points behind. Here's Kiara Milligan of Michigan. 2.7 degree of difficulty ahead of her last dive. Eighth place after the first five. The only sophomore in the competition. No freshman. Oh, she nails it. She finds vertical. You know, the last thing the judges see, I've talked about this a lot, over the, the years I've been commentating is they see that entry into the water. And if it is lacking in a lot of splash, that was a little bit splashy, but if it's vertical, you know you're going to receive the six and a halves most of the time and above. Here's Elizabeth Kay of Virginia. 2.8 her degree of difficulty in this last time. She's in seventh place. What a tremendous what a great yes, for her. It's tremendous that she scored on the one meter. She was 10th place. And she's going to score in the top eight on the three meter. And Josh Arndt, her coach, went to Indiana University. And they have a lot to be concerned with when they're when you have such a great swimming team and you want to be a part of everything they're celebrating and it comes down to the last dive and you don't do it well you you kind of leave with the taste in your mouth of i could have done so much better but this was tremendous for her to be in the final and to score points on the one meter also mission accomplished yeah. by virginia's yeah i think the look you saw on the, on the face of elizabeth k right there gave you a, a broad sense of just how, how much pride that she has for what she's accomplished here in Athens. Contributing. It's great. There's Lavanon in sixth place with one dive to go. Very nice. She struggled a little bit early on, getting some fours in the first two rounds. And then she started to pick up some momentum. And she keeps her feet together. I think this is probably her best dive. If it scores over 56 points, Yes, it will be her best. Oh, no, it does. <laughs> and She's Cynthia, got it. that is going to be the dive that we see from our leader, Vasquez Montano. That's the dive that she, is, she has planned for her last dive. Here is Sophia McAfee from Purdue. She's in fourth position. Started about six and a half points out of third before this final round, but Ann Fowler ripped her finest dive of the competition to begin off this sixth round. And this is Sophie McAfee's first final also. It's tremendous. She's a junior at Purdue. She's got another year, and she was 10th last year. So she's scoring in the big events. Oh, nice. Very nice. Inward two and a half. Little lower degree of difficulty than these 3.0 dives. It's hard to score the 60 points and above when you don't have the 3.0. But that's a very nice last round. <laughs> a very accomplished <laughs> I think she's relieved it's over that will not be <laughs> quite enough to pass Ann Fowler well here's Haley Hernandez finished ninth last year she is 
1.3 points behind Vasquez Montano for the lead. Her final dive, the degree of difficulty, only 2-1. She has to absolutely nail it. Okay, well, she nails it. And let's keep this score in mind, 342-45. Can she score enough points to stay ahead of no. Ann Fowler? Just short. Oh, my goodness. It's within hundreds. Because and she scores higher judges points. She gets some eights. She's three tenths behind Fowler. So now it's Vasquez Montano. She's going to need about 46 points on this 3.0 dive. Her last one, you usually save the best for your last. You want to know what I think? Piece of cake. This is, this is not a huge challenge for Aranza. She defended her one meter NCAA title earlier in the meet. She she's scored. trying to defend the three meter championship with one more dive. She scored in every event she's ever been in in NCAA competition. Oh my. That'll do it. Oh my, there's your winner. Again, again, defending on the one meter, defending on the three meter, unbelievable how she can make mistakes and still win competitions because of her diving IQ, her skill set, her work ethic, everything about her. Highest scoring dive from any of the competitors in the three meter. Hard to believe Chapel Hill had never had a national champion diver until last year when she did it on the one and the three meter. And she is about to do it again. Here's the last dive of Bridget O'Neill. Bridget needed above nines to be in the top three. And even though she comes back and does a good dive after missing in round four and five a little bit, this isn't quite going to do it for to be in one of the top three spots. But a good job by both of the Texas divers. So O'Neill's score 61.50. She will finish fifth. That's where she finished on the one yep. meter. But Aranza Vasquez Montano has swept the springboards for a second straight year at the NCAAs. Oh my goodness, and she will dive at the Olympic Games for Mexico. The only woman to dive three meter from Mexico at the Olympic Games, they've already decided that. Single-handedly turning Chapel Hill and the University of North Carolina into a diving school. Vasquez Montano by over 22 points wins it. Fowler from Indiana, the runner up last year, Runner up again, Haley Hernandez for third, but Aranza Vasquez Montano stands on top of the podium again. Aranza, before last year, UNC had never won a title in diving. Now you've defended your one meter, you've defended your three meter, and you're putting Carolina on the map. For you to be that person, how special is this right now for you? It's super special. I mean, I like. I'm from Mexico and I just dreamed of being in the United States and being able to put my school that I love so much that gave me the opportunity of being here like it's just super special and like they give me the opportunity of doing what I love and keep like my academic and, and sports and stuff so I'm just really glad that I get to do that and yeah I just love this school and I love that I'm able to do that. Yeah. You talk about loving the school and I know that you love your coach so much and especially after round four when it's really tight you have two rounds left. What is your coach saying to you to get you to push through those two rounds and just be so glad? He's like laughing over here. I love it. <laughs> what is he saying? No bad words. No bad words. <laughs> um, he, he just told me to like trust myself that I just needed to keep my head in the game and just being able to do the dives that I know how to do. Um, he just gives me that confidence of me. Even if I'm nervous, he just gives me the confidence that, like, okay, you have done these dives pretty much every, like your whole life. So like you can do it one more time. So that confidence really helps you through like those nerves and that adrenaline that you're feeling in that moment. One more time, you keep doing it. Now you defend your championship on the three meter. Congratulations, Aranza. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, a championship smile from Aranza Vasquez Montano. Here are the updated standings. Virginia in front, but Texas with a 3-5 finish on the three meter, thanks to Hernandez and O'Neill. They have gone past Florida. The Longhorns right now in second, Gators third. The updated team standings has Virginia 28 points up on Texas and about a 41-point spread between Texas and Florida for third.
Well, the 200 backstroke is on the way. Well, let's take a look at the 100 back that happened earlier than meet and see if Catherine Burkhoff of NC State was able to win a third national title. So it's Burkhoff in lane four, standing in six right now in second place. But here comes Catherine Burkhoff of NC State for the third time in her college career. Wow. She's a 100-yard backstroke champion in 48-55. That's a heck of a time right there. Time for the championship final of the 200-yard backstroke. There are the NCAA and American records. Reagan Smith. Five years ago, 147-16. And Rowdy, over the last three championships, a freshman has claimed a 200-yard backstroke. Phoebe Bacon in 21, Smith in 22, Claire Curzan last year. Bella Sims is the two seed coming into this championship, the freshman for the Florida Gators. He can do it, right? Bacon, the freshman in 21, is now a senior for Wisconsin, but right next to her will be that freshman. So here are the introductions. Lane one from Virginia Tech, that's Caroline Bentz Sr. She was 46th in this event two years ago, and now in a championship final for the Hokies. Isabel Stads had a very nice meet for Cal, second in the 100 back. The World Championships bronze in the two back a couple of years ago, Stadden in two. Here's Josephine Fuller for the Tennessee Volunteers. Third place finish in the 200 IM. This is a race that Tennessee has never won. And she dropped almost two tenths in prelims earlier today. And here's the national champ from 2021 as a freshman. National runner up the next two years. Phoebe Bacon of Wisconsin. Big drop as well, 1.24 earlier today for the American Olympian. And here is the freshman trying to make it four straight championships by a freshman in this race. There's Bella Sims. She's had a huge event. 200 free champ, 500 free tramp, and she tries to win her third NCAA title in her freshman campaign. Kennedy Noble of NC State dropped 1.1 earlier today, finished third of the 100 back earlier in the beats. And she's just a sophomore. Here is another freshman in the field. Of the three, it's Miranda Grana of Texas A&M. Did reach a championship final in the one back, finished eighth here in Athens. And the last freshman in this field, Katie Choates, out of nearby Norcross, Georgia. At the SEC Championships, finished eighth in the 200 back, but here she is, timing things well, swimming fast, and in a championship final here at the University of Georgia. And there is Phoebe Bacon of the Wisconsin Badgers, national champion three years ago. This is going to be a... a Glorious race to watch. Yeah, and, and both of these swimmers, Bacon and Sims right there, have Olympic experience, both on the team back in Tokyo. Bacon was the one that swam this event at those Olympic Games. She finished fifth. She's also got the luxury of already being a champion. Runner-up last year, runner-up the year before. She would come back and win three years after she won her first one. Rowdy, we've seen Sims go out very hard yeah. in her first two championships in the two free and five free. Is that what we expect? Absolutely. She's going to make everybody in the field chase her down in this event. I, it's just the way she's been swimming the entire NCAA championship. She's, she's just been going out really fast, making everybody earn it on the back end. She's got great, easy speed as well, and she's first right there at the 50. 25 flat on the way out. Fuller in Tennessee second, Staten third, about two tenths separate first from the third, but right now about four strokes for stroke across the pools and hit the 75-yard turn. You've got some really good swimmers here. I mean, Staten's been 148 right there. Josephine Fuller's been 149 right above her in the orange cap. So you've got three, four, five swimmers that have broken 150. So really solid field here. But I think when it comes stretching out, you're going to see these two in the front. B.B. Bacon, though, making a move. The underwaters are tremendous by Sims. But once they get on top of the water, that's when Bacon is making her move. And she's now taking the lead. 
Yeah, she knows exactly how to swim this race. She's been doing it so many times during her illustrious career. 21 years of age right now, and she is putting on a clinic on a back half of a race right there with that red cap. On that split, 27-6. She has split Sim by seven tenths of a second. One more turn to go, and at the bottom of your screen, Isabel Stanton of Cal is making a move as well. Phoebe Bacon about a half body length lead as they make the turn. Bacon for Wisconsin, Sims up above her, and here comes Kennedy Noble of NC State in lane six. It is a match race. Oh, right now it's Bacon. Here comes Sims. Noble giving it a shot, and it is Phoebe Bacon by two tenths over Kennedy Noble. Sims finishes third, but I Phoebe Bacon. Go! Bookends national championships. Freshman year, senior year, a title coming back to Madison. What a race at the end, though. And Bella Sims made him chase her that front half. But she came on at the end, didn't she? And so did Noble. Wow. Where did Kennedy Noble come from? Her best time before this was 149.7. She just won her PB by over a second. This is where Bacon took the lead right here. Really for good, for good at the 150 mark. No question about it, but look at that great stroke. Oh, that is so beautiful. Great rotation, nice tempo, putting her legs into it. But these other two are saying, hang on just a second. I'm not gonna let give this to you. And what a swim by Kennedy Noble, the sophomore from NC State. Getting second, squeezing by Bella Sims. They're all, all of them, 148s. What a race. That might be the race of the championship in terms of pure competition down the stretch to the wall. Bacon wins it, Noble second, Sims third. And what a gutty finish by Phoebe Bacon. Phoebe Bacon, you win this event your freshman year and now your senior year. In a turn or backstroke on day three of these championships, you're tired. What is going on in your head? What is going on in your body, especially that last 100 when things are starting to tighten up a little bit? You know, the best way to think about it is everybody's hurting on this last day. Everybody's hurting while they're swimming that last 100. You just got to be able to block that out so you can get your hand on the wall of the finish. Yeah. How much motivation and validation do you get from a swim like this heading into a pretty big summer? Dude, it feels awesome. <laughs> it's fun. It's great to do it with the team here. I love my Wisconsin Badgers. And you know, I think it's just gonna motivate me even more. We love to see you on top, Phoebe. Congratulations. Thank you. I love Phoebe Bacon. <laughs> A full Badger embrace, bear hug. Phoebe Bacon, the fastest 200 back she has swam in three years, and she is now a two-time NCAA champion. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings as teams compete for a combined $500,000 in student-athlete scholarships from Capital One. On the women's side, the Seminoles and Longhorns tied atop the standings. Stanford six points behind, then Nebraska and Pitt. Over on the men's side, three-way tie so far. The Jack Rabbits of South Dakota State along with Michigan and Clemson. We have 13 individual titles across these championships, and sadly, not enough time to show them all to you. So here's a recap of the distance freestyle event. Sims on the way home. Still the body length clear. Wyatt trying to hang on to second with rug hair up in lane six. But it is the freshman from Florida, Bella Sims in 432-47. Bella Sims, your NCAA champ in the 500 free. And the Gators go one, two. Oscar has a real shot here to take down Bella Sims to take the underwater. Sims stays under longer, and here they come. The lead by maybe a shoulder length to Sims, but Papowski is surging toward the wall. It's going to come in the touch, and it is Bella Sims by seven one hundreds. A match race in the final 75 yards, but Bella Sims claims her second NCAA individual championship of her freshman year.
their very own Georgia Bulldog, Abby McCullough, is on the way home to claiming a national championship in her home pool. Everybody on their feet. And here comes McCullough. A few more strokes to the wall. And McCullough in 15-37-74 in Jack Bowery pool. The Georgia Bulldog, Emmy McCullough, has become an NCAA champion in the 1653. Ready now for the championship final of the 100-yard freestyle for the women. There are the NCAA and American record set in the ACC tournament by uh, Gretchen Walsh at 45-16. What has Gretchen done in these championships, Rowdy? Three NCAA records, three American records, meet record, fastest in history, that's all. Yeah, it's just been one of those amazing miraculous competitions for this unbelievable swimmer and she's not done yet. And this will be regarded as one of the finest individual accomplishments in an NCAA championship that we're witnessing. There in lane one, Anna Poplowski for the Indiana Hoosiers. Christina Regenauer is in lane two for Louisville. She tied for seventh in the championship last year. Jasmine Nocentini. Won the 100 breast earlier in the meets. The transfer from Northwestern to Virginia. It's been a great week for the Italian. But well, here is Gretchen Walsh looking for her sixth individual NCAA title. Won the 53, won the 100 fly. The NCAA record holder, and oh, by the way, two-time defending champ in this race. Catherine Burkhoff should be a bit of a challenge in lane five from NC State. The 100 back champ earlier in the meet for the third time in her career. This is a race the Wolfpack has never won. In six from Ohio State, Amy Fulmer, two-time Big Ten champion in the 100 free. She dropped almost a half second in prelims today. Another critical piece for Florida, new to the program this year, but not new to the NCAA championships. Former Cal swimmer Isabel Ivey, Pac-12 female swimmer of the year a few years ago. She's had a second place finish and a seventh this week. And here's Gabby Albiero, senior from Louisville, fourth in this event last year, finished sixth in the 50 this week. Great swimmers, everybody swimming for second. Gretchen Walsh is going to win. The question is, will she break 45? I wish I had about five minutes to set this up. There are so many superlatives for her unbelievable swimming here in Georgia. I mean, it's just, un her 44, let's go back to her 100 flybers. Just a second, as we look at Burkhoff, great chance for second. Her 47, 42 would have just missed the A final in this event, the 100 freestyle. Will she be the first in history to break 45? Let's watch the start for Walsh. If she has any kind of quick start, 44 is an option. Take care, Mark. 0.72 was last night, 0.73, not bad for Gretchen Walsh. But again, she comes up fast, she'll be 9-9 maybe at the 50, at the 25, 10-1, she'll take that. 21-2-ish, looking at the first 50 maybe to have a chance. The so Walsh coming to the first 50 yards, she will touch it 21-40, and about a three-quarter body length lead in the field. Just under her record pace. Now remember, her record's 45-1-6, so maybe she's saving just a touch to come back on that back half. It's a long in seats ways, but a great turn there. There's the final turn, the last 10 yards for Gretchen Walsh. Her NCAA mark is 45-16, and she yes. has it, and she's in the 44s. 44-83, it is possible. And Walsh takes down her sixth individual NCAA title in once again NCAA record time. Oh my goodness, have you ever? How more stunned can we be with the results of Gretchen Walsh? Uh, look at the crowd, doesn't even know how, that's Virginia. <laughs> they don't even know how to react to that. Here she is right there in the middle of the pool. Last off the blocks, but it doesn't matter because the acceleration she has into the pool does so much for her and her breakout. Her underwater's unbelievable. And then she's first to the wall and it's clear sailing from there. But look at this. Just sit back and enjoy this, everybody, because I'm 
not sure you're ever going to see something like this again. I said it last year, of course, with Kate Douglas, but 44-8. Oh, my gosh. Savor the mastery wow. of Gretchen Walsh. Rowdy, she just won the 100-yard free by 1.4 seconds. Wow. Just amazing. And he's he got it all. up the records. The U.S. Open, the American, Goats. and the NCAA record Goats. all on one <laughs> exemplary sub-45 second swim. And the master, Gretchen Walsh, is once again with Elizabeth Beisel. Gretchen, 44-83 is unbelievable. And I never want to take any of your swims for granted, but I feel like I have to recognize how frequently you've been racing, how everybody here has been racing, and how tired that makes you, especially on night three. How much harder was this 100 free versus your 100 fly or your 50 free or the relays that you've done earlier? Honestly, the one this morning was a lot harder, so I think I was just feeding off everyone's energy, kind of like Phoebe said, we're all hurting, but just having the motivation to swim fast on the last night, I think that's something the Who's all do really well, so just feeding off that, and I was excited to swim that. That was the goal, so it didn't hurt as bad as I thought. Congratulations. Thank you. And the third individual title and her fourth NCAA record of this meet. And the updated team standings have Virginia on top of the table, adding to their lead. And how about Virginia and Gretchen Walsh, the GOAT? 44 8, and she's not done yet. Well, we've already seen Virginia's Alex Walsh win the 200 IM national title, but it did not stop there, Rowdy. Oh, it did not indeed. How about the 400 IM, the decathlon of the sport? She comes back and wins that, doubling up 200, 400 IM in the second fastest time in history. Great backstroke leg there on that one. She went 355.9. Emma Wyatt right underneath her was second at 359, but she won the race by four seconds. Unbelievable performance there. That would be her seventh individual national champion. She still wasn't done. The final day of the maid, the 200 breast. Not done yet. How about a 202 flat? 200 breaststroke. Talk about versatility. We talked about that with her teammate Kate Douglas last year. She's showing it off here. 200 breast champion blowing away the field again. Mona McSherry in the orange cap gets second from Tennessee. And Walsh caps her NCAA career with eight individual titles. Ready now for the championship final, the 200 yard butterfly. Alex Walsh Holds the NCAA record, 149.16, established earlier this year. Reagan Smith, 148.33 is the American record. And in this two fly, like we saw in the one fly, three Texas Longhorns will be in it. And we saw Stickler, Bray, and Pash finish 2-3-4 in that one fly. Here's Abby Harder in lane one for Virginia. Senior from... Broadlands, Virginia, her third career A final, seventh last year. Here is Kelly Pash, fourth in the 100 fly earlier in this meet, the senior out of Carlisle, Indiana. The Pac 12 champion from this past year, Rachel Schlinker from the Cal Bear program. She is in lane three. Big exhale onto the deck for the grad student, her final individual NCAA swim. Here's Olivia Bray, finished third in the 100 fly earlier in the meet, the senior for the Texas Longhorns. Again, they will try to lasso the field with three of the eights, including the defending champion right here, Emma Stickman, senior from Katy, Texas. She became the first ever Longhorn to win this race last year and finished runner-up in the 100 fly earlier in this meet to Gretchen Walsh. Only freshman in the field, Tess Howley of Virginia. She made three finals at the ACC Championships. The two fly, the two free, and the two back. And here she is in a championship final. Lily Nordman of Stanford out in lane seven. Member of the U.S. national team between 2019 and 2021.
captain of Team USA at the World Junior Championships five years ago. And Lindsey Looney, the senior from Arizona State, second in the Pac-12s. And the two fly to Clinker, fourth in this event last year. I, I think Texas got a chance to go one, two, three here. They really do. Uh, Stickland's the defending champion. Bray's the top qualifier. Stickland won taking out Pash. I mean, excuse me, taking out Walsh, who did not swim this race. Taking out Walsh, she, she won by almost two seconds last year. So she's got to be the huge favorite. Emma Stickland in lane number five, but all three, including Pash, have a chance. Who was third last year? This is, uh, this has Longhorns written all <laughs> over it right now. And Rowdy, they would love a 1-2-3 finish because there's not much margin between them and Virginia winning its fourth straight team title. Yeah, and Klinker right there in lane number three. She'll be pretty good. She came off the World Championships about a month ago where she won. She got fourth place there, just missed winning a medal in this event, the 200 fly. Quick start by Bray. The Longhorns are 1-2-4 at the first 50. Well, it was Stickland this morning in the prelims who took it out fast. She was 51-9. She was over a second ahead of Bray, her teammate. And Bray came back on the second half to grab the top qualifying spot. A little bit different here tonight. A little different strategy for both of them. Bray's the one chasing it out. Midway Mark and Rachel Trinker and Cal is making a bit of a move. Very close second in lane three. Yeah, Stickland's in third right now. Pash is in fourth, but they're all right there together. If you're looking for Pash, she's right there in lane number two for Texas. Look at Clinker. Clinker coming off those World Championships, brimming with confidence. She's not going to get this to them. 50 yards ago, it is still Rachel Clinker of Cal. Bray second, pass third, Stickland fourth. The Longhorns are two, three, and four. Well, she's over eight tenths of a second faster than she went in the prelims at the 150. Still looking good. This would be an upset. No question about it. Clinker looking to spoil the Longhorn party in lane three. Watch the defending check. Oh! Here comes Emma Stickland. Emma Stickland with a late lightning bolt to the wall, and she defends her time. In 150.99, chasing down Trinker. Pass gets up for second. The Longhorns go one, two, five. Superlative last 50 yards for Emma Stickland as she defends the title for the Longhorns. Wow, did you see that last turn in last 25? She went by Clinker, but everybody else, like they were sitting still. Unbelievable, and what a completely different strategy, right? I mean, she swam it completely different than the prelims. Out slow, coming back fast. Tonight, complete opposite. That's the 100 turn right there. She was a bit behind at the 100 mark. In fact, she was third at the 100. And then watch this right there. She just comes off that wall. Watch her right there. There she is. Look at that. Underwater, underwater. What a turn. What a shot, guys, from the truck to see that great perspective. But they win the battle, but that did it for Virginia. They are officially the national champions. So UVA cannot be caught despite that finish by Stickland and Pash and the Texas Longhorns. And Emma Stickland defends her two-fly title. She's on the deck with Elizabeth. Emma, you defend your title. It was such a controlled and patient race on your part. I want to know, off that 175 wall, when you're coming home on that last 25, running everyone down, what's happening up here for you? Undies, undies, undies. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to go talk to you. That's what I want to do. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, it takes a lot of patience. That's the number one thing for me. Um, I'm a very, very excited an emotional swimmer, and so it's really hard for me at times. Um, but uh, I managed to get it done at the right time, so that's awesome. Yeah, and twice in a row. Let's talk about your Texas teammates. One, two, five tonight, two, three, four last night, and the Hunter fly. 
Is it an advantage to be able to train with those Longhorns every single day and know that they have your back in an A final like this? It is such an advantage to have them at my side. We're back there in the ready room and I'm just looking at them and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm really not alone in this. And not just them, but those girls over there or they were over there, they're right there. <laughs> I love them so much and our energy at the has just been like insane and the best it's ever been. And I just, I really appreciate all of them so much. Two for two, Emma. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Awesome job. And here are the updated standings. Texas solidifies its second place position behind Stickland. Virginia, though, claims its fourth straight team title. Cynthia, we're ready for the third and final diving event of these championships. Uh, through the first of five rounds of the platform diving championship. Viviana Del Angel of Minnesota right now leading Purdue. Third, seventh, and eighth, but very tight after the opening round. And now it's the Louisville Cardinals. I'll say Prosser. Perfect. Beautiful. She can go in the water without a splash. Mm, big numbers. She is a gorgeous diver. And being in the finals at the World Championships in Doha just recently, when she secured the spot for the Netherlands in the Olympic Games this summer, I think just adds to her confidence. She's already a terrific diver. Remember, she was eighth in this event last year. She's already doing a whole lot better than that. Four nines for Proster. 74-20 on that dive. She's the one to catch right now. Here's Darren Rice. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. That arm stand. Is, is tough. They start judging the minute you push up into the arm stand. You don't have to judge just when the arm stand is controlled. You do it from the time your feet leave the platform going up into it. And then she does a great dive, somersaulting and twisting to the water, figuring out how to go in vertically. That's over at 60 points, mm -hmm. over Six, 65. Almost 70, 68, 80 for Darren Wright. So now it's beginning to get good. <laughs> Prosperin took the lid off. Right followed, and now we'll see what Del Angel for Minnesota has in store. She's your leader after the opening round. And this is a 3.2 degree of difficulty dive. She's got a pretty famous coach herself, Winbo Chin, uh, who coached at, co-coached at the National Training Center for the U.S. when there was one in Indianapolis. <laughs> oh, that was lovely only a sophomore and she's the only sophomore Whoa. in the competition no freshman here but how nice is this to see these women doing such consistently high scoring dives this is a contest yeah. over 75 points but wow in diving parlance the, the gloves have now come off we have <laughs> seen three monster dives in a row that is the highest scoring one so far delano hill 75 20 and here is vieta who certainly has Maybe not seen the last couple of dives, but heard the crowd reaction. This is a 3.2 for her. Beautiful long lines. Perfect control in the arm stand. Whoa. Wow, that is so pretty to watch. <laughs> you know, it's obvious that I like diving. I love diving. A little bit. But I, I really love watching things like this where she controls the arm stand. That's what the judges are looking for has a beautiful stretch in her legs and her feet, and she's gonna score over 70 points also. Well, we're seeing some great competition now. End of round two, and it's Viviana Del Angel from Minnesota with a slight lead, but it's getting good in Athens. Platform Diving Championships entering the final round from the Gabrielson Natatorium on the campus of the University of Georgia, and Viviana Del Angel is your clear leader going into the final round. Del Angel finished third on the platform last year, and she has a comfortable lead going in of over 23 points, and she knows the title is within reach with one dive to go. Absolutely. This is, this is where you want to be going into the final round. Just do what you do in practice every day. She just picked up. 35 points on Macy Vienna in that fourth round. So now in second place is Montserrat Laminat. Well, Laminat will trail by 23 going into her last dive. Here's Janie Boyle to open up the final round. 
senior from Ohio State in seventh position. Well, the leader, Viviana Dillon Hill, the youngest, the sophomore from Minnesota, would have to miss in order not to win this competition right now. She has yet to miss in this competition. She really hasn't missed. And she's been in first place in every single round. Oh, a nice last round dive from Jane Boyle, the senior at Ohio State. Wants to be a doctor. Justin Soshor in his 10th year coaching in Ohio State. Loves coaching her. He said she's just, she's a great worker, a wonderful team person. Good for her to do a last round dive that scores over 60 points. Oh, that's what it's all about right there. there. Best go. dive of the championship in her final round. Good for her. 63 points on that dive for Boyle. Skill kid of Texas, third place after four rounds. What's it going to take for her to be in, to stay in one of the top three spots? I would say sevens would probably secure it. And that's a guess, because we haven't seen the majority of the field dive. It's a little sideways going in the water. Just not quite square with that twist. So, oh, there's a lot of effort being put into that. We'll see what happens. But you're, you're right on those numbers, Cynthia. Range of six to seven, mostly six and a half. 62.4, that's our highest scoring dive of the final. So here's Lavinat. The national runner-up a year ago. She's in national runner-up position again, going into her very final dive. She's about 23 points behind our leader, Del Angel. This is a 3.2, and this is an absolute must for Lavinat if she's going to win the championship. She likes to put this dive last because it's one of her favorite dives. And I questioned it only because sometimes your arms are tired when you get to the last round, and an arm stand requires strength in the arms. No problem. No problem. I understand now. Drew Livingston, the coach, told me. I didn't talk to her about it, because I would not do that <laughs> and put any doubts in her mind. But this was a very good arm stand. A back double with one and a half twist. Uh, over 65 points. We'll see what happens. She's in good position right now, but we're going to see five more divers. So a total of 304.7 for Lavinat. She finished national runner-up to a Schnell last year with 347 points. Five divers to go. Here is Purdue's Sophia McAfee in eighth place entering this last dive. Sophia is a very charismatic diver to watch. She's got a lot of style and grace, and she can clean up uh, some details to score higher points, keeping her feet together and her toes pointed maybe just a little bit more, but she has all the, all the necessary equipment to be not just a good diver, which she's displaying, but a great diver. 62.40 for McAfee. And here is Elsa Prosterink, who was in second place after the first two rounds and then scuffled the last two. This is her final dive. She's currently in fourth place. She does a good job on her last round. We're just going to have to see. She's in fourth, and it's a close contest. Will she be able to be in the top three? I would say sevens might secure that. It's, it's a possibility, but she doesn't go ahead of Jordan Skilkin, so maybe not. She was in fourth and might stay in fourth. 60.9 for Proster. The three divers left, Darren Wright of Purdue, 
Then we'll see our leader, Delon Hell, and then Vieta. Right in sixth place with one dive left. Oh, you know, she's a lot like Bodai in a way because he didn't waste time on the platform <laughs> either. You announce his name, the whistle's blown, and he goes. And I think that exudes confidence. And the judges feel that. When you're sitting on the side of the pool and you're judging, you can feel. Well, if a diver does a lot of fidgeting and waits around, maybe not so much confidence. Well, here is our leader, Viviana Del Angel from Minnesota. The Golden Gophers have never won a women's platform diving championship. And she is in the clear driver's seat with one dive remaining. Completely. I don't think I'm going out on a limb to uh, take a bet on this one. She's doing a dive that she likes. She does it well. She did it well in the preliminaries. She's doing it in her head right now. That, That's good. How to do it. That's good. You know, it started to move past vertical, but she didn't need real high scores to win this competition. So she is going to be the winner. She might have been a little ahead of herself with that adrenaline that she might have had pumping in the last round. I think that could have been nines and maybe even tens. She got a little bit anxious, possibly. The celebration begins for the Golden Gophers. And Viviana Del Angel, there are the numbers. Yes, it's over. It is over. One dive left. It's Macy Vieta. It's all about positioning right now for Vieta. Fifth after four rounds. She could go into third if she gets seven and a half. Nope, she's a little sideways going in the water. These twisting dives are so precarious. When you unfold out of a twisting dive, you have to be square to the ends of the pool and the sides of the pool. And when you're not, when you're still twisting a little bit going in the water, uh, then it's not a great thing to score big on those dives. It'll be a sixth place finish for Vieta and Purdue, but Wenbo Chen and the Minnesota Golden Gophers will bring a national title home courtesy of Viviana Del Angel. First ever platform national champion for a female diver from Minnesota. Del Angel wires the field to win the championship. Vivi, you were third last year, you are on top this year, and you were the first Minnesota Gopher to win a platform title. I can obviously see the emotion. Can you put into words, you can make me cry now. Can you put into words what this moment truly means to you, what you're feeling right now? I'm just so happy. Um, I <laughs> I just want to thank my team, Wembo. My parents are here, and I don't know, I just can't believe it. I'm so happy. <laughs> when you have such an incredible performance like that, how much confidence do you have in yourself now knowing that you just did something for the first time ever as a Minnesota Gopher? I just trust myself. I just try to listen to my inner self, to my heartbeat and that's it, and let it go. Yeah. That's what I do every single dive, and it's working. And that's it, I'm just so happy. And let's go, Minnesota! <laughs> Congratulations, Vivi, you deserve this moment. <laughs> Viviana Del Angel, she's about to make all of us cry. Historic night for the Golden Gopher. And a reminder, the NCAA Men's Swimming and Diving Championships take place March 27th through the 30th, live on ESPN+. Plus. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here are the team standings. The Virginia Cavaliers will cement their fourth straight team title. Texas in solid second position, Florida third. Well, we'll take a look at some relays from earlier in the meet that we did not have a chance to show you at Full stretch, and we'll begin with an 800-yard freestyle round. Yeah, it was all the Gators on this one. The Cavaliers were the defending champions, but the Gators won by over two seconds 
over Tennessee. Clean sweep for the SEC, 1-2. And the Gators kicked it off in a big way. And that's Steph Virginia's nine relay winning streak across three NCAA championships. Then also later in the main, the 200-yard freestyle relay with Virginia, the defending champ. Well, how do you beat this? A 20.2 <laughs> off of Gretchen Walsh. And her sister out of Scott into the game in the fun two, going 21 plus into that party. Virginia wins it going away. And a meet we have seen littered with Virginia NCAA records. We saw one in the 400 yard medley relay. Well, let's start off with another sister act, why don't we? Walsh, 48 2, 56 3, 49 1 for Alex Walsh, and a 47 2 on the end for Parker. That's a new record. The fastest in history. 321 flat, what a performance by the Cavaliers. Ready now for the last of the time finals of the 400 yard freestyle relay. The Virginia Cavaliers have won this race twice in a row and they hold both the American and NCAA record. The time to beat coming into this last time final was established by the Indiana Hoosiers of 310-68. But you have an impressive, legendary quartet on the deck for UVA, Rowdy. Yeah, they've been together for so long, and they're they're really not done, potentially. You've got three seniors, but they all have a chance to come back next year. Gretchen Walsh, who is a literal superstar, is just a junior. So this relay has the potential to do even more. Will the record go down? Fastest in history, 305.84. That's averaging 46.4. But last year they didn't have a 44.8. <laughs> I mean, that they Gretchen Walsh went 44.8 earlier in case you missed it. <laughs> we'll follow the numbers. UVA opens with Jasmine Nocentini, the national champ of the 100 breast earlier in the meet. She is in lane four for UVA. Yeah. Four is in five, Bella Sims on the leadoff leg. Yep, she was fourth in the 100. And then if you look at what Florida and Louisville, who are two teams that have that potential, Florida won the 800 free relay, Louisville was second in the 200 free relay, but they front load everything. They are putting their two best swimmers on the first two legs. And I tell you what, Bella Sims has gone out hard, challenging Virginia right out of the gates. And they're going to come on the first exchange almost simultaneous. Because five 100 separate. 4701 goes Bella Sims, 4706 goes Nosentini. Yep, same exact time Nosentini went earlier. Bella Sims did not swim the 100 free. She swam the 200 backstroke. But now you've got Alex Walsh, who just got out of the 200 backstroke. And here she is, where last year she went 46-5 on this relay, 46-5. She's going against Ivy again. Florida has front-loaded everything. So this has UVA written all over it. There is no way, unless they jump, anybody's going to be UVA. Because this who's, next one. Who's next? Gretchen Walsh about to dive in. UVA second. But all signs point to UVA as Laney Kruger for Florida, and she's already been passed by Gretchen Walsh. The rocket has launched. 46-6 for Walsh, and I'm talking about her sister, who just went 202 in the 200 breaststroke. UVA trailed in the exchange. Walsh now leads for UVA by more than a body length. 21-1. 21-1 on the feet. 21-1 on the feet. This is a supersonic leg by Gretchen Walsh. She's two and a half body lengths clear of everybody. And Maxine Parker is going to be an exhibition on the way home for UVA. That was a long finish, 45-1 on the end. And that was all the touch. That could have been easily 44-7 or 8 with a good touch. She was long on the finish. But that didn't cost a false start, which is most critical. And now, they're about two seconds ahead of record pace. We will follow that into the final 50 yards. Maxine Parker for UVA right now in the lead. Florida second. 
And Louisville very close in third. The difference was Brett Walsh anchored last year in the 45-8. That might be the difference with the record. 305-84 is the NCAA record for Virginia. Is there one more NCAA record for UVA? Here's the touch by Parker. 305-89 missed it by five hundredths. But it's a third straight national title for UVA in the 400-yard freestyle relay. Florida second, Michigan, check that, Louisville third, Michigan fourth. <laughs> so close. Uh, I, I think all of them would like to have that swim yeah. back. Not right now, granted, but here's to Walsh, to Walsh. How many times have we seen that over and over? Let's get ready for the Olympic game, sisters. Look at the lead she's got. And <laughs> that's off of just her leg. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. A long on the finish show, but here's the end of the race with Parker. 47-1, by the way, for her. Just, 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 just yeah. missing that record. And Rowdy, how high are the expectations for UVA now? They've just won their fourth straight team championship. They've won their third straight 400-yard freestyle relay. The look on their faces when they saw the scoreboard that they missed the NCAA record, it's as if they finished last. They really <laughs> wanted to break that mark. They did. But, hey, listen, they're spoiled. Rock. <laughs> 305-89, missed it by five one hundreds. That's only the second fastest time in history, okay? That's and there are the summary results from the 400-yard freestyle relay. Third straight national championship for Virginia. Florida second. Indiana out of that third time final did get up for eighth. And you see the second page, Ohio State ninth down to Wisconsin, finishing 16th. So Virginia wins it by, what, 86 and a half points. Third straight year for Texas finishing a runner-up. And Florida ninth last year, Rowdy. They climbed six spots in the ladder and finished third. Yeah, great performance by the Gators. And you almost have to give the Coach of the Year award if you gave one to Anthony Nesty for that big jump. USC certainly deserves uh, a lot of uh, props for their moving up. It's just been a great performance, top to bottom, top 10 teams. So the trophy ceremony for Todd DeSorbo and the Virginia Cavaliers, four consecutive NCAA National Championships. How epic is this accomplishment? And, and I think you and I both know, having done this sport for a while and like, together, you've been part of the swimming family now for a couple years, how difficult it is to win one national championship and to do it over and over and over and over again pretty cool. Well, let's hear about the mastermind behind the national champion Cavaliers. Our Elizabeth Beisel is with the head coach of Virginia, Todd DeSorbo. You have a target on your back. This team has a target on your back. How do you continuously get these ladies to show up? What do you do when you coach them? What is the secret sauce that makes Virginia so special? You know, I I think that the comp, they just rise to the competition, you know, the, the entire NCAA rose this year and, and, you know, a rising tide brings up all boats and, you know, the women just keep on just impressing us over and over and over again. When you think that they can't do any better, they just keep doing it. And, you know, this year was, it was a tough year. We had a lot of challenges and um, they just rose to that occasion and, and really just did some great things this week. I have to end this with asking you, is there anything that you want to say to this incredible group of women behind you right now. I, I, I think I say this every year, but they're my heroes. To watch them do what they do uh, you know, every day in practice, day in and day out, um, you know, I'm just glad that they get to see the fruits of their labor and, and be really successful because they work really, really hard. So I love you guys. You're my heroes. Go Hoos. Congratulations, University of Virginia. Four times in a row, national champions. So for my Olympic partners, Rowdy Gaines, Cynthia Potter, and Elizabeth Beisel, I'm Patrick Keenis saying so long from Athens, Georgia, where the Virginia Cavaliers are the 2024 NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving Champions.